Hi and welcome to lesson one of DMAD's third free QGIS series. This series is for intermediates and we'll look at some more analysis techniques and also look at some more visualization techniques. Today we're going to look at hill shading which is just a way to make our 2D maps look more realistic and easier for the human in brain to interpret. Okay so in this lesson I've got our raster of Montenegro that we used quite a few times in the previous lesson and you'll see that we've uh, that's all I've got I've got our country file just out of habit but we're really going to be concentrating on the raster and that's all we're going to need in the lesson and from our raster we can get some basic um, some basic sort of uh, ideas we, we, we're able to tell that this area here is lower than the rest of, of the map and some of these white areas are much higher than other areas of the map but it's quite difficult for the human brain to sort of comprehend this we they only been able to see it in a 2d view we looked at color to, to begin to bring some of this um, out a little bit and to make it appear more 3d and today we're going to look at another option which is the hill shade and in order to get the hill shade we go to raster and analysis and then just simply click hill shade and you'll see we've got a couple of options in our parameters um, obviously our input layer is going to be the raster that we're working on so in this case it's the complete raster under band number we only have one option because it's just a DEM so we're going to stick with band one grey but you'll remember that I talked about um, some data captured by advanced drones or um, planes which has multiple sensors um, and in that case we would want to use whichever one was the, the DEM band. I'm going to leave the Z factor and the scale ratio as they are and then come down to this section that says azimuth of light. So the azimuth of the light is just um, the angle of the light compared to north so obviously if we were at zero it would be here going around to 90 degrees 180 and then 270 degrees to the west so this is just the horizontal angle of the light uh, the next option we have is the altitude of the light now if the azimuth is considered the horizontal angle of the light the altitude of the light is just the height of the light so if it was at zero degrees it would be flat to the earth's surface uh, and if it was at 90 then it would be at um, it would be directly above the, the surface so I've got these um, and when we're looking at light if we want to highlight certain features then um, we really want features which are uh, running uh, sort of perpendicular to our light so in this case our feet, main features that we want to highlight are the mountain ranges that sort of run from northwest to southeast here and then again the same on the coast and so I'm gonna actually keep that figure of 315 because it's quite useful for for what it is I want to do and I'm gonna click run actually no sorry I'll come down and save it and you can see that I've done this before so I'm gonna keep it as hillshade 315 and click run and you'll see we get this this nice 3d image which begins to illuminate some of the some of the mountain ranges that we were talking about um, interesting you can see that actually it seems to have uh, highlighted this bit around the lake more than uh, more than the actual areas that I was looking for but um, that's something which happens occasionally um, and it's just something you have to play around with to get the settings right I want to quickly show you a little bit of a bug in uh, QGIS. If I go to raster and analysis and then hillshade, and this time I want to do it at 90 degrees or any other angle really, but 90 degrees I'm going to use. Um, and then I come down and save this. Now 
And again, I'm just going to overwrite it, but you obviously won't have that option. Uh, and if I run this, you'll see that I get a very odd looking raster, um, which actually isn't correct at all. Um, as I said, it's a little bit of a, a bug in the analysis. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that. Um, and I've got no idea why this happens, but it is something that happens in GIS and it's something that you need to be aware of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my 315, which is correct. So now we have no hillshade layer, um, but obviously we saved our 315 layer. And then I'm going to go to raster, analysis, hillshade, and I'm going to run it at 90 degrees this time. And you'll see it, it's worked properly this time. So our 90 degree hill shade has worked properly. So what I'm going to do is I've, I obviously saved my 315 hill shade. So I'm going to bring that back into the lesson as well. And you can see how the taking the light from the different angle has illuminated different features. Okay. So if we want our map to, to demonstrate um, sort of multiple uh, different ways of light to make it look even more 3D, then what we can do is we can change this opacity. So if we go to transparency, I'm going to set it down at, um, let's say, 50 degrees. And you can see if I've got, not 50 degrees, 50 percent, sorry. And you see if I've got it at 50 percent, as in this case, then um, we get sort of the the best of both worlds in some ways um, I'll set this to 50% as well so it's not showing more one than other um, and this sort of gives us a yeah like I said a best of both worlds we can see um, where some of the mountains along the coast are identified we can see this this little bit here um, and also some of the features over here that we we're interested in um, and this is good because it gives us some of the the key edges uh, however it doesn't really give us any information on um, on the actual height of things um, so we can tell where the edges of the mountains are and so what we can do is we can combine the two different techniques that we've learned go to symbology um, on our on our underlying raster and um, if we add the color to this as well then hopefully it's going to give us a really nice um, really nice idea of the the land and how it falls um, and you'll remember that we created our own topo colors so I'm just going to use those but you can use whatever you want uh, so they were just from the other lesson in the second set of uh, second course of lectures so I'm going to click apply and OK and now hopefully you really can get a really good idea of where the highest areas are so you can see we've got our green areas which are the low lying areas and then our brown areas um, coming up to our white which are really the highest um, and I'm just going to do one last thing which is to just set the, the background to a different colour uh, just because we've got a couple of clear areas where we've got no data in this um, so I'm just going to set it to a, a light blue um, uh, of course it didn't work because of the, the um, raster value so you can ignore that actually ignore the last step but um, I was hoping to fill in a couple of these gaps because at the moment it looks like a uh, these are the highest areas uh, just because of my white colour um, so yeah I hope that's been useful for you um, I hope you can see now that it's, it's much clearer uh, in our 3D uh, it's much easier for us to visualise it's much easier if we were to explain to anybody else um, and yeah I hope that's been a useful lesson for you I've just changed that back um, and hope you've got something out of that. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks. Bye.